Saturday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be hindered. I have dealt with great things that I do not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I cannot know. I had heard of you by word of mouth, but now my eye has seen you. Therefore I disown what I have said, and repent in dust and ashes. Thus the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his earlier ones. For he had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. And he had seven sons and three daughters, of whom he called the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapak. In all the land no other women were as beautiful as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this Job lived a hundred and forty years, and he saw his children, his grandchildren, and even his great-grandchildren. Then Job died, old and full of years. The Word of the Lord. Responsorial Saul The response is, Lord, let your face shine on me. Teach me wisdom and knowledge, for in your commands I trust. Lord, let your face shine on me. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. Lord, let your face shine on me. I know, O Lord, that your ordinances are just, and in your faithfulness you have afflicted me. Lord, let your face shine on me. According to your ordinances, they still stand firm. All things serve you. Lord, let your face shine on me. I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may know your decrees. Lord, let your face shine on me. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, let your face shine on me. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The seventy-two disciples returned rejoicing and said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. At that very moment he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desire to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. The first reading comes from Job 42, 1-3, to 5-6, to and 12-17. Job realizes that he's questioned the motives of God when he doesn't understand so much. And so he disowns what he said before, challenging God, accusing God of being unfair, and he accepts God's message. What is God's response? He blesses Job in this world. Remember, there's a very weak sense of the afterlife. There's only that one mention of possible resurrection of the dead. Most of Job follows the idea that if God's going to reward us, it has to be in this world. And therefore, at the end of Job, even though it cheapens the message a little bit, Job is rewarded with material blessings. The Gospel is from Luke 10, 17-24. The disciples have gone out, and Jesus says he saw Satan falling like lightning from the sky. This is not referring to the primordial rebellion of Satan against the forces of God. Rather, it's referring to the fact that the mission of preaching the kingdom of God 
is also a mission of disempowering Satan, a battle against cosmic forces in which Jesus will win. But the disciples should not rejoice so much in the authority that they've exercised, but rather in the fact that their names are written in heaven. That their mission is not to their credit, it was God's mission. Their blessing is the fact that God has chosen them to be his instruments. And then Jesus thanks God that the simple have received the mystery of God and they've embraced it. It's not to those who are super intelligent, to those who are powerful, but rather to those who are childlike, who have the simplicity of embracing the message of God. And finally, Jesus proclaims that truly these disciples are blessed because they've seen the fulfillment that prophets and kings had hoped for but never saw. We should remember that we too experience the fulfillment when we're at Mass, when we hear the Gospel proclaimed, when we see the Gospel lived in our midst. We're living in the Kingdom of Heaven, already dawning upon the earth. And so we should be filled with a sense of joy and a sense of gratitude to God that He's allowed us to experience this miracle. And may God bless us.